Good morning, uh, my name is Lindy Smith and as some of you know, I've been experimenting with mirror glazes over the weekend and today it's all about mirror glazes. So I'm going to tell you what I found out, I'm going to give you a little demonstration and I'm also going to show you some of the examples that I made. Now you can see a slice of cake here, shall I bring it a little bit closer you can see and I created a rather pretty pattern and I know from what some of you have been saying you'd like to know how to make this. I'm going to have a go at showing you in a little while. So if you'd like to tell me uh, your your name, where you're watching me from and maybe if you've got a few questions about mirror glazes. I'm still learning but I've learned quite a lot over the weekend. Okay so what you're going to need before you start is you're going to need some uh, white chocolate and I've got some little bowl here. Okay, you're going to need quite a bit of that. I'm going to post the recipe afterwards, the one that I've been experimenting with. You're going to need some condensed milk. You're also going to need some gelatin. And you'll need some water, a saucepan, probably a thermometer and a few other bits and pieces. But I will put all that uh, in a link at the end and I will explain how to make it. You're basically going to melt your white chocolate, your... Uh, condensed milk and water in a saucepan until they're not no I've got that completely and utterly wrong you're going to melt your condensed milk and your sugar and water in a saucepan you then add the gelatin in which you've already bloomed and then you pour that over your uh, white chocolate that in a nutshell is how you do it a few good mornings we've got uh, Amanda from rainy Gloucestershire and we've got Ria from Cornwall and Nimala from Malaysia Fantastic. Good morning to you all. If you've got any questions about mirror glaze, then do ask. As I said, I've been learning. Now, the recipe I've just uh, explained is what I've been using. Some of them have, the recipes you'll find on the internet, have glucose in them as well. I want to try that out because what I found is actually the mirror glazing doesn't last particularly long. Uh, this one has lasted. This was done on um, oh, nearly 48 hours ago. And it's been kept in a dome, uh, a cake in a dome. And it's still nice and shiny, as you can probably see. I don't think the light catches it. You can see it's got, still got the mirror effect on it. The ones that I've done on dummies and boards, um, the mirror effect has gone. In fact, it went after about uh, 24 hours. Uh, Debbie says she's going to watch later as she's working now. Fantastic. It'll be good to see you. And we've got Lorna from New Zealand. Hello and good morning to you all. Okay, now I've been um, dem uh, practicing this morning. And I've got a, an example I will show you. And what I'm going to do is flip the camera, show you some examples. I am going to have to um, warm up the glaze I've already made because it needs to be at a certain temperature. They say between sort of 33 and 35 degrees. Basically, it's a pouring consistency of honey, but you'll see that in a little while. So I'm going to flip and show you some examples. And that way you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Obviously, you've got this, this example here, which is real cake, everybody. It's a chocolate uh, fudge cake, and I've got the rest of the cake over here. The bit that's left, anyway. Uh, Vanessa says hi from Brisbane, Australia. Good morning to you all. Right, I'm going to flip the camera and you can see a little bit more about what I've been up to. Bear with me, this takes a little while. Okay, it's flipping now. Right, this is one I actually did this morning because one of the comments I had was that I wasn't doing any sort of normal glazing. So I thought I'd have a go this morning at something a little bit more standard, more that you see on the internet uh, that other people are doing. So that is an example I did this morning. Okay, we've got Sue from East Yorkshire. She's saying she's watching, waiting for her cake to bake. All right, now I've got some other examples that I've done. Now these ones, the glaze is no longer shiny. If I just... Try and catch the light on this. I don't know if I can on that. There you are. You can actually see it's beautifully shiny. But in the distance, we've got ones that were shiny on Saturday. But now, can you see the sort of mottled effect? There, that's half dried and half shiny. In the dome here is the rest of the cake that I've uh, shown you a slice of already. I've got another example down here. Now, I was, I was trying to see if wafer paper was okay if you put it on top of the glaze. And I can report that it is. And I've got some little ones here, um, and again, I've, this, these are pastelage stars that uh, are on this one. It was beautifully shiny yesterday, no longer is. There. Obviously, it does vary, and some more stars. And I did a large cake over here, and I've got one that my daughter had to go at, which is this one here. A 
Elaine says, good morning from Yorkshire. She's um, making gingerbread boxes today. Fantastic. Oh, it's lovely to know what you're all doing. Okay, just flick round. There we go. So this is a fresh one. So in my experience, um, the glaze is lasting for about a day. If it's covered, it lasts a bit longer. Okay, I'm going to show you the uh, colours that I've made up, ready and waiting. So we've got a pink, a blue, an orange and a white. And what I'm going to do is I've got to warm those up. Somebody says, oh, beautiful, you're such an artist. I do like to play. So I don't know what we're going to create this morning, but it's going to be interesting. Whatever comes out of this, um, it's going to be really interesting to see. So I'm going to pop my camera up on here. And I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit. So I've got space and you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm moving the cake out of the way. I'm going to bring this board in. Now, this is just a practice board. Where, as you saw from the examples I showed you, I practiced on boards and I also practiced on dummy cakes as well before I did the real thing. I think you need to get a feel for this glaze. And the most important thing I discovered was that it, you've got to avoid uh, bubbles because bubbles spoil that beautiful flat finish. And what I'm going to do now is just warm up the, can I put, this is the, the pink. Now this is slightly on the thick side. They, as I said earlier, they say it should be between sort of 33 to 35 to 37, even some people say. Like pouring honey. And that's that one. I could probably get away with that one. And this one's a little on the thick side. I'll just sit there. I'm going to put that one in the microwave. I've got a microwave behind me. So I'm just going to pop that in for a few seconds. Okay. Just to make it a little bit runnier. So because what I find once I put them into the little that's a little bit there we are that's runnier now can you see the difference you want a beautiful smooth glaze I'm going to do the next colour this is white and that's definitely a little bit too thick so I'm going to pop that in the microwave too now what I found with the white is although I'm using white chocolate I've added some white you know, to it as well because otherwise it becomes too translucent. You need to sort of make it more opaque so you get a nice effect. So it's only literally a few seconds. I put that on for five seconds. Can you see? That's a nice consistency. I've got one more to do because hopefully the, the pink base. Can you see what happens? Is it there's a skin on that? It just starts to to go a little bit lumpy and it creates has a skin on it in fact I'm going to leave that one I think that one's fine and then the main color the background color is going to be this pink which I've actually put in a a measuring jug okay I think that's going to be fine so I'm ready to pour so this is the exciting bit now when I did my main cake I actually videoed myself and it took me six minutes so I'm hoping I can do this a little bit quicker I'm going to bring that in a fraction so it's in the middle of the camera and move that out of the way okay so when you're doing it over a cake you can either start in the middle and let the icing go to the outside or you can start on the outside and allow the icing uh, then come into the middle so I'm just going to I don't know if I've got hopefully I've got enough because I'm going to add other colors on too okay so that's just covering the board with the icing Move that to one side. I'm now going to start adding colours. Now there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, I mean, how you place them. I'm just going to put a few blobs to start with. Like that. It's very satisfying, this, and it's great fun to do. Now when you're doing it on a cake, obviously the icing drips down the side of the cake as well. And you get patterns on the side of the cake. Put some in the middle. You don't have to be tidy because we're going to change all this in a moment. Put some white on here. Now, the slice of cake that I had at the very beginning, I put lots and lots of different colours on. And I did it in lots of different ways because I'm basically experimenting. This, for me, is all new and exciting. And I just love colour. So the more colours, the better. And the more they're sort of spread out and... and uh, 
moved around, the better. Okay. Can you see what happens? When I put one colour on top of another, it all moves. And I'm now going to get the blue in. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do lines of blue going across, I think. Like so. Ooh, that looks fun. <laughs> and I'm going to put a light um, pink. It looks like a bit like fried eggs at the moment, doesn't it? Okay. So a few more good mornings. Oh, we've got uh, who have we got Janet from Philadelphia in the, in the states. Fantastic. Good morning to you. Okay, I'm going to go across. Okay, so it's just adding colours basically. Now I wanted to do a little bit in the middle. I've just remembered what I'd had planned, actually. I will talk about how the standard ones are done in a moment. But this is just a bit of fun. Okay. And another bit of white in the middle. Okay. I've about got all the icing on I want. You can add icing um, glaze as you go. Okay, the secret now is to get a cocktail stick and the cocktail stick basically drags one colour into another and you can do all sorts of amazing things So there's no, I hadn't planned this really. I just thought, well, let's see what happens. And it's just fun to do. Now, as you saw, I've done it on a cake. It's not that um, you can't do it on a cake. You certainly can. And what you might need is just a piece of kitchen paper. I've got some here just to keep your cocktail stick nice and clean. Now you take a colour from one area and you're sort of basically pulling it through another area. And where I put the thin stripes, you just get these lovely little thin lines. Now, at the moment, I've got a very big blob of uh, orange there, so I'm just going to add some blue into the centre, because, of course, you can add more colours as you go. And I might add a little bit of the uh, pink in there as well. So let's put some more pink in there. So if you don't like part of it, you can just add a little bit more colour, and you can adjust it and change it. So there we go. And now I can concentrate on this bit and I can move those colours around. These are a bit like abstract flowers in a way, aren't they? And obviously I can move things into this flower. So you can change things and keep going basically as much as you want to. This type of patterning reminds me of some paper I once bought um, in Rome. I saw it being made. It's where you uh, float oil paint on top of water. You then put the paper, you put a comb through the ink which moves it around, breaks up the bobbles and makes this sort of pattern and then you pop a sheet of paper underneath and it picks up the pattern and it's beautiful. Okay, have you got any questions? It, um, Lindsay says, how does it set? Does it set firm? It's interesting. It's like a jelly to start with. So if you think of a thick jelly, and but it's, it tastes lovely because you've got that chocolatey taste to it. It's really rather nice. Eventually, it goes completely firm because I've got some that I did a couple of days ago and they, they lose the shine. Basically, as it sets, it loses the shine. So the shine only is there for a short length of time. So I guess you've got to use it on cakes that are going to be eaten within a day or two. Uh, certainly no longer than that. Now where you store it depends on what's inside the cake. So my cake hasn't been in a fridge or anything because it's just a chocolate cake underneath. But if you obviously you had a fresh cream filling or some type of filling that needed to be refrigerated, then it would go in, in the fridge. I'm just going to keep playing with this. What other questions have we got? We've got uh, hello from Ross and Y. Mitzi says it's beautiful. Uh, Amanda says, do you need to add the gelatin? Yes, you do. There are um, 
vegetarian options online. I've seen a recipe that uses agar agar. Um, if you are a vegetarian and you don't want to use gelatin, that certainly is an option. I'm going to add a bit more in there because I think that white needs a little bit more colour. And maybe a little bit of pink as well. Oh, and I'm liking this. I hope you are too. It's uh, quite fun to do. And so you can just keep going. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Break up that white. And then obviously I can bring some of that white into it, do it the opposite way around that way. Oh yes. <laughs> right, I think I better stop playing with this now. But you, hopefully you can see what you can do. You can keep going as long as you want. Now obviously if it was a cake you don't go all the way down to the icing. Now with the cake that you saw earlier, what I did was I covered it with chocolate ganache and I popped it in the freezer for a short while just so it's nice and cold so that the icing, the, it's, the glaze sets. Um, you can do the same with buttercream. Uh, again, just cover it with buttercream and then pop it uh, into the fridge or freezer for a little while. You can also cover this over sugar paste and you don't need to freeze that because obviously the sugar paste will go wet. So uh, you've got lots of different options there. Uh, see if anyone's, uh, Hillary says she missed the beginning. What's the icing made up of? It's basically white chocolate, gelatin and sugar and condensed milk. But I'm going to post the recipe afterwards, so don't worry, you don't have to remember it. And what I'm going to do is just, I've got a light here, is turn the light and so hope you can see that it's... No, I want to show the, the, the fact that it's... Mm, the sh ah, there you go. Can you see? It's a lovely, shiny finish. If you do see any uh, bubbles... Now the bubbles, as I say, is what you've got to, when you're mixing, you want to make sure that you don't get the bubbles into the glaze. You want to pop them, I can see one there, pop them with a cocktail stick. Because this liquid is very viscous, you uh, find they don't pop themselves, so you need to actually go over your pattern and pop as many as possible. That you see, there's one there. There we go. So you can just go in and pop the bubbles. You don't, um, as I say, but when you're mixing, just be careful not to get too many in there. Uh, Hilary says, great, thank you. And Anne says, uh, she's from Salisbury. She just popped in to see this and missed the recipe. I will post the recipe. Don't worry, Anne. No problem at all. I will post. Okay, so I'm just going to put the camera back. Uh, I Actually, I'll zoom in for you so you can have a closer look. I do love these patterns. I do say it wasn't difficult to do at all. And somebody's asking how long does it take to get to dry? Not long at all. I would I would give it an hour or so, but no, then you can transport it quite easily. You'll get uh, dribbles that come down the sides of the cake, and you want to sort of cut those off and then pop it onto uh, your plate or your uh, cake pedestal, whatever it is you've got. So this is the one I made earlier. Now this is done with a palette knife. If I can, I hope I won't, don't wobble too much. So what I did with this is I put a blob of white icing there and a blob over here, uh, orange sort of there and there. I swiped across it that way and then I swiped across it this way and that's all I did to create that pattern. So that's with three colours only. Okay, and I'm going to just show you the cake again for those who missed it at the beginning. This is the one, the actual cake that I made over the weekend. And I'm going to pop the camera back to me and see if you've got any more questions for me. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gives you a few ideas. As I said, I'm going to pop the recipe up. Oops, I don't. <laughs> That's the problem with being live. <laughs> I'll pop the recipe up and um, answer any more questions that you might have. So I'm still learning and I want to try uh, again and I want to try mixing this time using a recipe using the liquid glucose because I'm thinking that might help it stay shiny for a little bit longer. Who knows? If anyone knows the answer to that, then please let me know. Amanda says, what food colouring did I use? I used mainly liquid food colour, but I also used some white dust and I have seen people using gel colour. So actually, I don't think it really matters too much. Although, if obviously, if you use a concentrated colour, it's better than using one that isn't because you get a brighter colour. And Ruth says, did you say you're uh, to apply it over fondant? 
you can apply it over either chocolate ganache, which is what I did uh, over the weekend. You can apply it over chilled buttercream or you can apply it over sugar paste as well. It's entirely up to you. As long as you've got a nice smooth surface, the important thing is it's smooth. If it's not smooth, the glaze uh, picks up all those lumps and bumps. So you want to make sure that uh, your mirror is nice and even and that means you have to have a nice smooth finish. And have I got any more questions? And uh, oh, Judy sent me a lovely big red heart. Thank you so much for that. I do love to see the hearts and the uh, thumbs up flying across my screen. It's very kind of you all. Okay, I will pop on, as I said, and uh, so this was a challenge that somebody set me to see what I could do with mirror glazes. So if you have another challenge or there's something else you would like me to demonstrate, then please let me know and I'll do my best. Okay, I'm going to press the, the finish button and I will pop up the recipe shortly, but bear with me. I've got to tidy up here a little bit first and then I'll pop the link on later. Okay.